Oh, wow. We'll be like the uh, the non-redneck comedy tour. <laughs> well, podcast yeah. tour. The slightly redneck podcast tour. Slightly redneck. <laughs> Sounds good. Man, I'm, I'm liking this Ooh. idea. Shit. Wow. <laughs> so how are you doing? <laughs> good. How's it going? Jesus. <laughs> we don't even fuck around with the fucking around anymore. No, it, just it right just, into it. Yeah, we're just right into it. Welcome to Accelerative Thrust. I'm Dan, or whoever you would like me to be. And I'm Eric, or whatever you'd like me to be. Mm-hmm. And together we are... Uh, wild uh, Stallions. And wild <laughs> Stallions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was just going to go with that. Well, well, Accelerative Thrust. Oh, oh, yeah. That is the name of this podcast. Mm-hmm. Wow. And what a podcast it is. Welcome. Folks to our nightmare (laughs) we got a lot going on today Mm -hmm. yeah it's been two weeks (laughs) yeah 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 sure we're gonna (laughs) review records and those records Uh, are good records that's true yeah 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 man i'm 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 feeling pretty cool (laughs) i guess i'm feeling pretty cool today yeah yeah I uh got my I shades on. <laughs> yeah, and and uh weather out there is pretty nice. There's a zombie virus that broke out yesterday due to uh some sort of thing on my phone. Yeah, Whoa. I'm doing pretty cool. Did you hear about that? Was that a zombie test? Mm-hmm. Oh yep. I didn't yep. realize it was activating certain viruses that uh will eat eat you alive. That's some serious <laughs> shit, man. Uh, uh, I didn't read it on the internet. <laughs> I heard it from other people's voices. You you talk to people that that thought that 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 alarm released zombie viruses. Well, to be fair, they read it on the internet. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm a little nervous about who you hang out with, Dan. <laughs> oh. Well, I I wouldn't worry about it. They're cool, man. They're just they're cool. <laughs> they're cool. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't worry yeah. about it. I mean, are they against like fluoride? Is it like that level? No, they bathe in it. Actually, <laughs> uh, they, they they heard about the uh, the many many health benefits of fluoride. Uh, yeah. 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 Wow. I wonder if you bathe in fluoride if it removes your cavities. <laughs> Yeah. Seals them right up. Like I said, they're cool, man. They're cool, man. No need to worry. <laughs> oh, boy. So uh, this actually uh, comes to a serious question. Okay. Uh, were you ever a wine drinker? Yeah, I dabbled in wine. Yeah. Okay. Did you have a preference over rosé or burgundy, or did it matter, or did you go for, I, like, other wines? I usually drank um, tabs. Yeah. Yep, yep. Those were uh, those were like pretty good. Dark and heavy. Mm, yeah, just like I like my man. <laughs> <laughs> and and and, uh, and your metal. I think and you my metal. metal. That's what I yeah. meant. Metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> metal, metal. Dark. Ooh, hey, speaking of which, shit. did yes. you know that apparently Megadeth is coming out with what Dave Mustaine says is the best album of their career? Hello, me. It's me again. And. <laughs> I thought the name of the new Megadeth record was going to be called Kings of Thrash, but apparently oh. King, Kings of Thrash is a band featuring former Megadeth bassist David Ellison and guitarist Jeff Young. Maybe I was thinking it was uh, well, how the hell are those guys Megadeth Kings album. of Thrash? I've never even heard of them. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? I <laughs> ask them. The, the nobodies they, of Thrash. <laughs> yeah. Ask them. They know. I yeah, mean, that's ask, why they're calling the record. I'll, that, uh, I'll ask David yeah. Ellison about that. Is that what you said? His name? <laughs> <laughs> David, David Ellison. Yep. And then hmm. guitarist Jeff Young, who I'm, oh, yeah. I don't Jeff, know who Jeff, Jeff Young, Young is, but mm-hmm. 
And it says yeah. this article that I just pulled up, which is this is all the way back from June 2023. But and then we're just deciding now, OK, this new music to fit within that. Should it be Jeff Young and David Ellison doing something together? You know, Ellison Young. Mm. That uh, that's not a very thrash name. So, of course, they had to go with Kings of Thrash. <laughs> Well, if it's Ellis and That's, Young, <laughs> then it's kind of like Flotsam and Jetsam. Yeah, or um, <laughs> like, um, what's that group with Neil Young? Uh, what was it? Uh, Crosby, Crosby, Stills, Stills, Nash, Stills and Nash and Young. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they should wow. call it Crosby, Stills, and Thrash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to let myself laugh at that. Nice one. Yeah, you wow. have to. Crosby, and... Stills, Thrash, and Young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> That's awesome. Shit. Yeah. That, well, that, that gets that's you as good as it's going to get. Let's pack I'll it I'll tell up. you what. If that, if that doesn't make you the kings of thrash, I don't mm-hmm. know what will. If Neil Young's in your band? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're the king of thrash. I'm the godfather yeah. of grunge and the king of thrash. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's been two weeks. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sure. We're going to. <laughs> Review records, and those records uh, are good records. That's true. Uh-huh. It's been two weeks since you looked at me. <laughs> you know, I really like that song, Bare Naked Ladies. Yeah? I really do. I Do you like that song? So I did listen to that song uh-huh. for the first time since I avoided it when it came out. And sure. uh, yeah, it's not bad. It, I mean, it's cool. It's pretty fast rapping which is all right, I guess. I, yeah, it was all right. I like it. Yeah, I, I, mean, I kind of, yeah. you know, the, the late 90s was such a weird time because there was so much cross-pollination, like, mm-hmm. going on, and and uh, there was definitely this thing where it was, like, sort of like a, like a white boy rap meets, I don't know, like, you know, I think it all started with Beck, you know? And then yeah. Soul Coughing and things like that, where those were the good versions of that you know what mm-hmm. i mean yeah and then there, there there came a lot of like second and third tier versions of that bare naked ladies i would say is like all right if we're gonna go like s tier which is like the super tier mm-hmm. down to like abc i would say bare naked ladies is like an a because i think that that song is pretty good but not <laughs> not completely like life-changing like uh i don't know mellow gold or ruby vroom you know oh yeah Stuff I love like that. soul coffee. Yeah, me too. Love and, them. And me cake too. too. Cake is and kind cake. of rappy. Yeah. Cake is cake is another one. Yes. Mm-hmm. Cake mm-hmm. is really, really good. Perhaps. Those guys all uh were really, really there was some interesting stuff going on around that oh, time yeah. period. For sure. A lot yeah, of not all men. bad, like like I pretend. Not yeah. all of the nineties was terrible. I mean No, some of it was very, very good. Yeah. I mean eighty to 98 percent of it was bad but you know there was a lot of good stuff too but in that you know 10 percent left it was really good but the 10 percent was yeah 10 percent was like god tier you know yeah god tears tears god in tears. heaven Would you know my name? <laughs> now that song came out in the 90s yeah <laughs> yep and it, mm-hmm. it's not in that 10%, probably. <laughs> <clears throat> I had a, a friend who really, really liked that song a lot in mm-hmm. high school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all I remember about it, really. I mean. And is that all you remember about that friend, too? <laughs> no, no. That friend is still a friend of mine. Oh, well, that's awesome. But I haven't seen that friend or heard from that friend in a long time. Mm. So is this person really my friend? You know, it depends on what your definition of friendship is. I don't know. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of friendships. I used to always think of ship uh, friendship, like a yacht or we all get on like a boat, like a Mm -hmm. ship and we're all Uh, friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would never get on a boat with my friends. (laughs) One of us won't make it back. I guarantee. (laughs) You think that it would just turn into like some sort of violence? Oh, no, maybe, but mostly probably just accidents. <laughs> oh, accidents. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. So, I don't know. <laughs> maybe. So it'd be like bottled violence, you know, the minor threat song. 
Oh yeah, like in uh, like on the cover of the CD. I don't know what it's called. The Mind complete discography. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's the uh, classic <clears throat> album by Minor Threat. Complete discography. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. their uh, their full length was called Out of Step. Yeah, pretty good stuff. It is good stuff. Me. Mm, you ask me too. Uh, I, I've, I, well, I don't really have a straight edge, but I don't know. Sometimes I have a straight edge. I mean, <laughs> and you're being, you're being pretty edgy right now. I'm being edgy. Yeah. Edgy, 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 uh, edgy. Hey, speaking of edgy, we have a, a punk record that we're talking about today. You're right. Yeah. 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 Cause you know, punk is edgy, right? I mean, yeah. Blink 182, Simple Plan, Sum 41, all those really angry punk rock bands. Yeah. And, and that's actually the extent of my knowledge of punk rock right there. You just said. Right. It. Good Charlotte. Oh, oh uh, yeah. I have heard. I've heard of. The, I've seen their t-shirts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Hot Topic. Hot Topic. Lifestyles of the Rich and the Famous. Oh, that sounds pretty good. I better check that out. <laughs> yep. Oh you better you better get on the good Charlotte train, Eric. Yeah, you know what though? You it's, missed it. I I did miss it and I can't <laughs> catch it. Um which actually is kind of funny because a lot of times on this show we try to cover things that are new ish, at least within yeah. the last year or two. Yeah. Uh, both of our sort of like national picks for this episode are kind of old. Yeah. So yeah, that's no. kind of funny. So Yeah, that that is that is kind of funny because we've we've talked about that so many times about how why did I not get into this band yeah. when they were mm -hmm. cool? You know right. what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, uh uh it doesn't help that there's a zombie virus out there now, but Yeah, I didn't even know. I'm going to have yeah. to be on the lookout for that. <laughs> Everything you hear and read about it is true. Just remember that. All that stuff kind of leaked down into the morgue and it made all the dead bodies kind of jump around as though it was alive. Uh, uh, you know what else is true? Huh? Uh, music is awesome to listen to when it's recommended to you by friends. And that yeah. ultimately at the heart is what this show is about, Eric. It, it really is. That's it, no joke. Then, yeah, that's no, the truth. No joke. We really do enjoy listening to all the music. And uh, boy, we got some doozies today. And I think we always have doozies. Yeah, I I, I usually look for a, a doozy. That's my first mm -hmm. re requirement. I just had to say pick. doozy today. Today <laughs> felt like a doozy day, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, that sounds fun. Doozy mm -hmm. day. Yeah, I like I like I like doozies. Doozies mm -hmm. are good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I guess let's talk about some records let's talk about some records come on everybody it's record time so i guess you go first i'll go first this is a self-titled record from a group called savoy motel they are from nashville and they were founded by jeffrey novak who plays bass in the project and then added jessica mcfarland on drums and vocals dylan watson on guitar and then Mimi Gailbier on guitars and vocals. Jeffrey also provides vocals as well. So I learned about this band, like I do a lot of other bands uh, these days, from watching the What's In My Bag series from Amoeba mm -hmm. Records on mm -hmm. YouTube. And it was an episode of one of my favorites, The Melvins. And the bass player of that band, uh, and I think he's the current bass player because we all know anybody who listens to Melvin's knows that they've had like 70 bass players or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the core of the band, of course, always being Dale Crover and Buzz Osborne. But the bass player that they had at the time uh, uh, was Stephen McDonald and I think still is Stephen McDonald. Anyway, one of his picks was this album, Savoy Motel. Cool. And I don't know. Have you you seen that show, that uh, series before, right, Eric? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So in the series for the listeners who may not know, basically what they do is they get musicians in Amoeba Records um, and they, they'll they follow them around and kind of watch them shop 
and then they'll do like a segment where it's like what's in my bag and the and the musicians will pick out like six items that they purchased or something like that or that they're gonna mm. purchase um and so yeah um uh steven pulled out this record and uh you know uh, the melvins have always been in addition to one of my favorite bands they've always been into a lot of weird music so uh when they played this clip from this band i was like well okay that 10 second clip or whatever they played sounded very interesting and uh very interesting this record is it's a very groovy and fun record the performances and the songwriting and the structures of the songs are all just absolutely masterful their sound has a very vintage vibe to it it kind of does sound like a a style and aesthetic from like the 70s i would say so there's kind of elements of soul funk disco hip-hop i would say even like a little bit of punk and techno kind of thrown in it's very soulful it's definitely the the vocals have that kind of vibe pretty much down to a t however with the 60s and 70s vibe it also definitely has some very like late 90s, 2000s kind of aesthetics thrown in as well. But this is kind of making me making it sound like they're like a throwback band or something like that. They, they totally are not. It's pretty much upbeat for the most part and very, pe- very poppy and very catchy, especially within the instruments. Like I mentioned, the groove, the bass really carries the music uh, a lot of the time. And there's, you know, um, some really great rhythmic drumming and some great like keyboards, organs, synths, stuff like that. But there's also like kind of a very much an undercurrent of experimentation as well. You can kind of tell that I think that these, you know, these guys are really into like maybe some noise and electronic there's kind of like some of that stuff kind of under like that kind of gets thrown into the mix. Like you, you'll hear like kind of just like a weird sound kind of pop up every now and then. So yeah, it really kind of has that fun, satisfying sort of groove to it. I don't know. Some of it also maybe has a little bit of a, um, I don't know, beach goth vibe to it as well, perhaps. It's just a really, really fun record. And there isn't really a whole lot more that I can really say to it other than it's just really groovy, really fun. There's a nine minute song on it that um, is really, it, it's, it, it goes through a lot of different motions and, you know, it almost seems sort of like a, um, what do they call that, uh, Eric, where it's like kind of like a few songs chopped up into one big long piece. Um, uh, like a medley yeah like a medley sort yeah. of yeah it kind of reminds me of that a little bit i mean the entire record is amazing but this song really blew me away it's called international language hmm. um and it's about nine minutes it's track number seven it's an eight track album but i mean yeah it's it's really really just awesome as far as the things that it reminded me of i would say maybe a little bit of abba Stuff like the Cardigans and Luscious Jackson, sort of. Beck, especially Odile era Beck. Uh, I would say even a little bit of MGMT, especially the vocals. The vocals really reminded me sometimes of, of MGMT, but there's also that sort of experimentation under like pop music that MGMT does really well. And I think this group does it really well, but they both have very different like aesthetics whereas like mgmt i think kind of has more of a definitely more of like a of its time 2007 vibe this you know savoy motel like i said it definitely does have like a unmistakable like vintage vibe to it uh but it's it's really really cool stuff and they have a new uh, a newer record that came out in 2020 um which is way more popular than this and this is pretty mm-hmm. poppy this is pretty catchy and groovy but that one legitimately there are songs that i could hear on the radio today um yeah. 
and and it's also very very good like that is very good but i i do think that this record is uh just probably my favorite one out of the two for sure um what did you think eric yeah i liked it a lot i do have a question for you though so when you're listing off people who played on it um yeah i don't know if i heard you talk about any sort of synths or programming or drum programming or anything is it list anyone for that uh what i found it didn't list anybody doing synths or programming and i was kind of i was a little um i was a little thrown off by that as well i couldn't find like a wiki page on them or anything Mm -hmm. like that and so like the only thing i found was uh jeffrey novak founded the group um i think he might have founded it with uh jessica mcfarland and uh he he played bass she played drums and did vocals and then they added dylan watson on guitar Mm -hmm. and then mimi gabliere on guitar and vocals now i Mm. did there is a live performance of them at kexp on youtube Mm -hmm. and actually i don't recall seeing like synths on there but i could be wrong wow well that's crazy (laughs) it is crazy because like 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 i mentioned there is without question a synth electronic element oh, yeah. on this absolutely Through without the whole question thing. yeah so, weird well i'll still talk about that part of it that i liked so sure. <laughs> anyway yeah like dan said uh this is just like funky esoteric kind of party music i mean it's made for fun to be fun but it's constructed you know very intricately and they knew exactly what they wanted to create and they did it. And it's really cool. It's really just like, like always, whenever I hear something that's just like fun, um, I'm always pretty excited about that because I do think it's kind of rare for things to like, there wasn't a lot of like darkness to this at all. Like this is for fun. So like Dan said, also it's like, uh, there is a seventies vibe to it. I think there's a really, it's just a really cool combination of different genres and artists and time periods um, where they sort of found what connected those different elements. And that's what they sort of like focused on is, is those connective things. You know, I don't think this sounds exactly like anything, but it has a vibe of a lot of different things. Um, It's kind of sleazy and groovy. It's kind of like, studio 54 feeling to me a little Mm. bit too yeah there Um, is a huge glam element to it yeah as well Mm -hmm. but i i I, like i said i think the synths are really cool and there are obviously fake drums and drum machines throughout the whole thing and and i say obviously because it's not hidden in any way these are like not even like pre roland 808 almost like like loungy drum machines i don't know it's in there but the other instrumentation is awesome everything's really locked in and just the only goal being fun and grooviness and funk and there is a huge funk element to the whole thing and i'm not usually a big fan of funk but this uh brings enough other things into it and doesn't really rely on it being funk which i think is a big deal um, but I really like the guitars, especially most of the time it has this like fuzzy harmonic overtone sound. There's a lot of wah in this too. So the sound though, is kind of like when you use a fuzz and then you leave your, uh, your wah like cocked, that's what it's called, where it's kind of in the middle and it just is like, just turns into overtones and har- harmonics and stuff. It, they use that throughout. It's kind of like, um, the guitar on Young Americans by Bowie. Uh, mm-hmm. Really cool. Uh, the vocals are cool. Uh, the more like masculine vocal is super raspy and sort of like, not to overuse the word sleazy, but kind of like that, like sultry, kind of like Mark Bolin from T-Rex, but way raspier. And then um, the more feminine vocals on here are usually doubled, I think. And they have almost like a, a, like a human league sound. And so I don't know. There's like I said, there's a lot of different things going on here. Uh and but all of it works together to just be like super fun. But yeah, things that it reminded me of, 
uh, like I already said, like Young American era Bowie, uh, T Rex, Tom Tom Club. Um, it also reminded me of uh, Enon's second record. Uh, it's called mm-hmm. High Society. Uh, sort mm-hmm. of reminded me of that. But actually, one of the big things it reminded me of isn't from the 70s at all. It was more of like the uh, electronic pop music from the early 90s, like pre-grunge, uh, almost like rave pop. So like the Soup Dragons mm. or uh, Primal Scream, things mm-hmm. like that. Um, it has a vibe like that, too. So it, it, at least it did for me. Um uh-huh. So yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in there. And yeah, but it, it all equals to just being really funky and fun and really well done. So yeah, I thought Savoy Motel was really cool. Yeah, it was awesome. guess and that brings us to my pick uh it's by a group called cruel stir the record's called riot boys and it's from 2018 i'll preface this with i don't know what these people's deal is okay so (laughs) uh there's a lot of things that they say and talk about and seemingly allude to that i don't know exactly what's going on and what I mean by that is they seem a little like, uh, I don't know what they're talking about. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, some of the stuff you hear and it's kind of like, what are they talking about here? And your uh, internal trigger warnings start to go off a little bit. You're like, well, I don't know what this is all about. But anyway, okay, so Cruelster. Honestly, all I can say is this is some crazy ass bullshit. They're from Cleveland, Ohio, which is close to Devo land, which I think comes through a little bit here too. Yeah, it's like kind of like really fast, classic, hardcore, really like spazzy synth stuff, weird, weird, snotty, aggressive, antagonistic vocals. Uh, The vocals are goofy and violent and just like unhinged. I don't know. It's, It's some wild stuff. All the instruments are just recorded like in the red, like everything on this is blown out. And I know the description I'm giving right now makes it sound like this is a terrible record, but I can't tell you enough how how much I like this. And honestly, if you have been pining for a successor of Men's Recovery Project, this is the answer. Like these guys are, I mean, seriously, I haven't heard music more like men's recovery ever and not that they sound just like them, but the approach is just so out of left field and so wild. I just, I, I I can't really say a lot about it. If you like classic hardcore and men's recovery project and just wild, crazy bullshit that sounds like it was made by lunatics. (laughs) I don't know. You can't get much better than this. Um, yeah, I can't go into it much more than that because I said everything I wanted to say. Things that it reminded me of, uh, like I said, Men's Recovery Project, uh, Black Flag, The Dead Milkmen, The Accused, uh, Fashion Pimps and the Glamazons, uh, Negative Land, 
an old Iowa band called My Business Failed in Three Weeks. And vocally, a lot like the Crucifix. So that gives you an idea of what the vocals sound like. This is one of the most fun records I've heard in a long time. Or I guess I should say I had the most fun listening to this record than I have to anything else in a really long time. If you're into crazy bullshit, this is your record. What'd you think, Dan? Yeah, it's a very peculiar punk record. Uh, no doubt about it. Yeah, it's it's straight up hardcore punk meets, uh, like you said, synth, crazy, synthy, spazzy stuff. Yeah, it's it's really hard to kind of narrow down what the hell is exactly going on. What what are they saying? What do they mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It it kind of seems like that's all by design. It's it's sort of a record mm -hmm. designed to make you feel somewhat uncomfortable, but also at the same time sort of laugh. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and you don't really know what you're laughing at. The the songs <laughs> for the most part are really short and in your face. And there's certainly a cartoonish element, like sometimes straight up the vocalist sounds like a cartoon, like mm -hmm. it's different voices, different sort of, you know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. It's, it's really intense, fun, kind of scary, kind of dizzying. It keeps you kind of on the edge of your seat, but mm -hmm. hilarious and consistently wacky all at the same time. It, it's um there's a lot of hardcore but you know there's also definitely some like i don't know i i i kind of thought that some of the electronic elements were sort of craft workish a mm -hmm. little bit mm -hmm. and another thing that i really really enjoyed was like i mentioned the vocalist kind of did different or maybe it was other members of the band i'm i'm mm -hmm. not really sure mm -hmm. but there's there's different styles of vocals kind of for the most part it's guttural hardcore like eric you mentioned the crucifix mm -hmm. um you know stuff like that or ki kind of some of the the vocalists the vocals reminded me of like when tim armstrong would yell on rancid's like fifth record their hardcore record mm -hmm. you know the self-titled one you know it kind of reminded me of that a little bit but there was also like some real like and again i don't know if this was the vocalist doing this or maybe it was a guitar player there there were some uh i feel like straight up homages to the ramones going mm -hmm. on as well mm -hmm. like the song dumb fuck is basically pinhead deconstructed sure like yeah. it's it's pretty much the same vocal i i swear it's got to be the same chords mm -hmm. um but yeah there's a lot of funny language kind of like there's this obsession with like calling. I don't know if it's like a, like a Paul, like they're referring to like politicians, but mommy, oh, like Benghazi you, mommy. Yeah. Benghazi mommy. But also it's, like, <laughs> there's also, there's also other songs where they're talking about mommy. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah. Do you know what that's about, Eric? No, like, I don't know yeah. what these people are about. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. Um, But there's even an Irish punk song that they do that <laughs> totally sounds and I'm sure is 100% satirical, which I'm pretty sure that this mostly is a satirical album. Like, yeah. I can't imagine these guys got together and said, let's make a serious punk rock record and then came out with this. Yeah. You know, like, I couldn't imagine that. It, Yeah, I don't know, man. There's also like with the vocals on certain songs, the, vo the vocals do sound like Joey Ramone to me. But then on uh, most of the time, it's like hardcore. But then there, there's also some like, I don't know, spoken word stuff. Yeah, this was just a really adventurous and like you said, Eric, very fun and satire totally mm -hmm. seems like what it's going on. So yeah, recommend it if you like. This is definitely like the uh, Sons of Men's Recovery mm -hmm. Project, which let me kind of go back there because that makes it sound like these guys are not as good as Men's Recovery Project. That's totally not the case. These guys, mm -hmm. what I mean by that is these guys totally if they weren't fans of like Sam McFeeders and what he was doing mm -hmm. in MRP, I would be extremely shocked. Uh, the other things that it reminded me of dead Kennedy's because of the satirical element. And there definitely seemed to be some politics at play. Mm -hmm. uh, and no means no again, because mm -hmm. 
no means no are kind of another band where if you if you listen to their lyrics sometimes you're kind of like now nah, where what do they mean by that you know there's kind of like i don't necessarily want to say edginess factor but mm-hmm. yeah kind of so kind of so um reminded me of dfl quite a bit too mm-hmm. Uh, because of the fast spazzy and also just the what seemed to me like a uh, an extremely um it was like an album that that definitely seemed like they just sort of i think you kind of mentioned it eric like it just sort of seems like they were in the red and Mm -hmm. kind there's sort of a spontaneity to it you know Mm -hmm. um and i i definitely felt that with the dfl record grateful that we reviewed Mm -hmm. a while back yeah the ramones uh, but then also like, yeah, with the electronic stuff, craft work, maybe even a little bit of big black. Mm-hmm. Um, I would also say uh, Sam McFeeder's other band born against that he's known for, mm-hmm. as well as uh, Wrangler Brutes. Whatever these guys are doing, I, I definitely enjoy it. Uh, great stuff. Yeah. And it's this is up there like as one of the, you know, just funnest records I've heard. And I, I just really enjoy the subversiveness of it you know it's it's just Mm -hmm. really cool stuff nice but then at the same time like yeah uh it it is sort of like what are they talking about (laughs) oh for sure yeah they have an album before this that i haven't yet listened to called potato boys yeah (laughs) and potato (laughs) potato is spelled with an e yep yep which is uh i think probably a, a a reference to um Dan Quayle. Dan Quayle. Yeah, yeah. he uh, yep. th- it was at a spelling bee. He told the kid that he misspelled potato because potato it's yep. an E on the end of it. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Like if you're talking about Dan Quayle, like I don't I don't know what you're talking about. Kudos to Coolster. What do you mean, Ohio? us to our local review it comes from a feller named dave helmer the record is called such a clown and it just came out moments ago so um dave helmer i've known for a, quite a while really he used to live in marshalltown i think that's where he originally is from i may be wrong on that but and then he moved to iowa city he is in crystal city and this i think is his first solo record um he also is a luthier the musician's pro shop and i hear he does really good work i don't know because i don't maintain my instruments but if i ever decide to do (laughs) that i'll take them to dave helmer but yeah like i said this is his first solo project or solo release and uh it's pretty good i mean it's really good i like it a lot it's um i would if I had to boil it down, I would say maybe like country tinged guitar rock and maybe some elements of like bar rock, but also a pretty health, healthy dose of like indie too. So yeah, I don't want you to think it just sounds like country rock or whatever, because that's not the case, but you know, all those different things are in there. I think the songs are really cool and they're, they're just like, fully formed and explored it's kind of like i don't know when you write a song as a solo artist i think a lot of times it's easy to just write the song play the song 
you write the verses, write the choruses, record the song, and it's over. These songs really kind of feel like they, they're lived in a little bit. So like maybe after you've toured with some songs and they start to expand and grow and change and they sort of mature and develop into what they are after you play them night after night, that's how these songs feel. So I think that's really cool. Uh, all the songs go like a lot of unexpected places as well. The backing band on this, and you know what? I'm going to take just a second to bring it up because I think they deserve a shout out because it's phenomenal. The players on this, Dave Helmer did the guitars and the vocals. Uh, Ryan Burnaman played bass, also did vocals. Scott Yoshimira played drums, keys, bass, piano, and organ. Uh, Sean Seaton played keys on the song Lemonade, and Jackie Myers played piano on the song Mine, It Takes a Break. But yeah, I just wanted to throw that in because the playing on this is it's phenomenal. It sounds like a really solid band, like a band that's been playing together for a long time, which I don't know if they have or not. But if these are just kind of like friends of Dave and they came in and did a session together, it, it really sounded like a a band that knows each other well. Uh, everyone on it is super solid. The production sounds great, really good, just totally professional on every level on this thing. Dave's voice. Uh, is really cool. Uh, it sounds really great. Um, he does a lot of different things with it, but you always know it's him. I would say there's maybe like elements of Jeff Tweedy in there, Paul Westerberg, and hopefully this doesn't come off wrong, but maybe a little John Cougar Mellon can. I mean, I know mm -hmm. that sounds silly, but I think it just has that gruff sort of Americana feel to it sometimes. And I would say the second star of the show here is the guitar. Dave is obsessed with guitars. I think he's a collector for sure. Uh, he obviously knows how to work on them. He knows how to get amazing tones out of his guitar. Uh, the playing is awesome. And one of my favorite things about this record is uh, the solos. They're just like ripping ass solos. It's like someone entering that space where there's going to be a solo and just saying, I'm going to fucking destroy everything with my guitar right now you know and that's how it comes across and it's it's really a lot of fun because you know i think sometimes people avoid rocking out i don't think it's like uh i think people think it's not cool or something to just rock out and i always appreciate it when people do that when they're just like you know what i'm playing rock music and this is how it goes you know but overall i think this is a really cool record uh, I think Dave's a cool guy. And uh, yeah, things that it reminded me of, uh, it's not a long list. Buffalo Tom, uh, Wilco, The Replacements, um, Tom Petty, as far as some of the music. And I don't know much about country rock, uh, maybe like the old 97s or something like that. But yeah, I, the whole thing, just a super fun package. And uh, yeah, I think it's a really great record. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, this is very solid songwriter rock. I mean, that's I would I would describe it as just really well done indie rock with a ton of country elements, some, you know, folk country, maybe alternative elements as well. To be honest with you, Eric, <laughs> um I mean, it's almost eerie how much we actually match up on our descriptions. Oh, wow. um, nice. To be, I mean, it, it seems to me like I heard almost everything the same way that you have. So really you kind of covered it. Like, oh. <laughs> uh, I, I, I shit you not. This is what I wrote down here. Okay. I really like his voice. It's very smooth, but also has an element of grit and kind of a natural twang to it. Puts me in mind of John Mellencamp. Nuh-uh. I'm wow. not kidding you. Puts me in mind of John Mellencamp. That's great. Like, and I love John Mellencamp. Yeah. So me personally, <laughs> I'm not, a, I, I mean, I find no shame in, in liking John yeah, Mellencamp. I sure. love, I grew up with him. And then I also said, uh, you know, the composition and level of instrumentation is outstanding, including the backing band. Of course, I didn't do the research on the <laughs> backing band that you did, but 
I was like, the bass playing has just a, a great pocket, the drumming, and there's also organs and piano or, you know, keyboards, whatever else is in there. And I could just tell that the guitar playing is just top level. Mm -hmm. um, and just everything works together and the performance is stellar. And I also mentioned the solos. Nice. <laughs> I was like, the solos are absolutely outstanding. I, I, I can't believe it, but it also doesn't ever get like to the point where it's sometimes when you hear solos, like all over a song, it gets to the point where you're just like, okay, like this, this is just sounding like you're trying to be, you know, you're trying to show off or whatever. Mm -hmm. No, it does not. It absolutely complements the songs like perfectly. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of melody and you can just tell this is a guy who, as you mentioned, Eric, a guy who has been doing this for the love of music for many, many years. And like you said, professional, uh, done very well. I can't think of a uh, more professional uh, like recording. <laughs> you know what I mean? This, yeah, this is just for sure. Hands down, just absolutely fantastic songs. Now, as far as the recommended, um, if you like, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I said Buffalo Tom also. No, uh -uh. I am not uh -huh. shitting you. But yeah, um, his voice really reminded me of the singer of Buffalo Tom. Mm -hmm. I also said Wilco. Nice. <laughs> now, you're not going to believe this. No, I also I said don't. Tom Petty. Really? <laughs> I'm not shitting you, Eric. Like, your, your description was almost in somewhat of a different way, but almost verbatim wow. in a way. But then also, there are a few other things that, I put down as well. Um, ben Queller. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it reminded me of that. Sun Volt is another one. Sure. Um, Frank Black, especially his solo stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then here's another thing. And this is pretty much only because of the solos, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, Dinosaur Jr. Oh, yeah. Um, his solos really did have kind of a Jay Maskus quality to it, I think. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I thought really well done stuff. But yeah, me and you, um, you know, there 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 are a lot of times where it's almost mind boggling how different we hear sure. certain albums. Right. This one we pretty much met like just <laughs> head on. Like well, yeah. Uh, hopefully Dave Helmer likes Wilco and Buffalo Tom and John well, Mellencamp. Uh because otherwise he'll be like, What the hell? If he <laughs> If he doesn't, I'm sorry, Dave Homer. <laughs> yeah, but right. <laughs> it doesn't take away from the awesomeness of no, the music. Not at all. It's a cool, cool record. You can't seem to hold it together. Maybe the hope ain't far away. I don't mind thinking further. Maybe you could lead the way. Maybe time ain't what you needed. You don't know. Check it out. And I'm also going to say, if you haven't listened to the John Mellencamp record, Scarecrow, mm, yeah, strongly recommend that one. It's a good one. Also, Uh Huh as well. That one's great as well. Yeah. Um, the thing about John Mellencamp's music, and I'm just going to go off on a mini tangent, it reminds me of, I don't know why it invokes images like this in my head and memories like this in my head. But John Mellencamp was one of the artists that me and my dad shared, you know, like a uh, like a, a a real love for when I was growing up. For sure. And so, what it reminds me of when I hear like um, you know songs like "Small Town" or like mm -hmm. you know "This Is America" and you know things like that, um, it reminds me of like fishing yeah. in a boat at like Chicken Creek you know, or something like that, mm -hmm. like growing up. 
That's awesome. Drinking drinking A and W root beer. Mm. <laughs> you know, things like that. Yeah, for sure. Nice. I wonder I wonder if there was actually a chili dog stand that he's actually referring to in Jack and Diane. Well, they're the tasty freeze, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, tasty freeze. Yeah, oh, there's one in okay. Marshalltown. Oh, there there's was. also yeah. There's always like those types of things. I mean, Muscatine's version of that would be like cherry top or something, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. <laughs> My favorite pee punk song. Parliament must have went to Muscatine in the 70s at some point. P Funk went to go get some gizzards. Yeah. Or pizza burgers. What's your favorite cherry top item? Mm. Uh, I, yeah, I used to really like their pizza burger when I was growing yeah. up, but my favorite will always probably be the fish and chips, but I haven't mm. yeah. eaten there since I had, uh, my heart attack from the last time I ate there. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're missing cherry top, you can just drink a big glass of grease, <laughs> yeah. but no, their fish and chips were always great because yeah. Uh, they uh, would bring out like four big pieces of fish and then some fries and mm-hmm. coleslaw. Oh man. See, that's all right. So and hush gonna... puppies too, right? Like fake hush puppies, not no cherry top, but oh. I'll tell you what, man, that's oh. one place that I do miss in Muscatine that I'm glad is gone <laughs> because um, I probably would eat it far more than I should. And that's yeah. long John Silver's long man. John's. Sure. Holy yeah. shit. I don't care. I don't care what anyone says that. That place was a magical wonderland when I was growing up. <laughs> yeah. I wondered about all those little crispies at the bottom of my basket. Yeah. They ended up in my arteries. <laughs> <laughs> Your arteries are just blocked with crispies. <laughs> like, dude, like they're doing heart surgery on me and they pull out a hush puppy. They're like, oh, I've been eating a Long John Silver's, I see. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's good stuff. Actually, I had long john silvers not that long ago um oh yeah trying to remember where i was maybe i mean it was out of state it was maybe yeah. like colorado or something but uh it was it was fun i mean yeah. i had a couple big old fish planks and yeah regretted yeah. it instantly absolutely instantly and why did why were the cups for your sauce and stuff yes so I shallow those things um, like a three centimeters tall come on man um, me and my dad, we uh, we actually ate. They have a Long John Silver's and A and W combined combination mm. one in Davenport, oh. and uh, so my dad and I we we went there a few months back, and actually, me and <clears throat> enemy Chuck, um, uh, yeah. we uh, were having a conversation one time about how good Long John Silver's was. I actually sent pictures of uh, it to Chuck in an attempt mm. to make him jealous and uh did it work his re- his, well his response was is that long john silvers and that that was as far <laughs> as it went <laughs> wow but yeah no those those cups it's like come on man you yeah. can't you can't give us thicker you cups. can't even dip a single shrimp in there man <laughs> no yeah you really can't so what i always get because if i'm going to eat at long john silver since i don't mm-hmm. eat that kind of food very often mm-hmm. i always get the platter which is like two planks of fish oh shit yeah and then like the three... admiral's catch is that what yep like and then that? no i don't get that i get that and then uh, i get the fish and chicken platter oh, so dang. i get two of those and then three pieces of chicken and then there are uh, wow. fries and coleslaw man like yeah. it's the only place that i like fries with coleslaw yeah i don't know why but like wow yeah, yeah. like i said that's kind of a once a year yeah if even that sort of thing this episode of Accelerative Thrust is brought to you by Long John, Long John Silvers. Long John Silvers. And oh. A&W Root Beer. Yeah. Long John Cougar. Long John Cougar. Oh, Long God. John Cougar Mellencamp. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I heard the story uh, of why he had to change his name. I guess, like, the record label wanted him to go by John Cougar as a stage name for some reason. Mm. And then I guess he being the rebel that he was, was like, Nope, I'm going by John Mellencamp. Wow. And so what they did was they met in the metal for a while and 
he went by John Cougar Mellencamp, but then yeah. he dropped the Cougar. Dang. This episode sponsored by John Cougar Mellencamp. John Cougar Mellencamp. Oh, wow. geez. Yeah, I think I think it might be time to wrap this up. <laughs> it was probably a what do you think? A time a while ago. Uh yeah. Probably. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh thanks for listening as always. And you should subscribe wherever you listen, just so you know when new things come out. I'm not trying to be that guy. I'm just saying it's yeah. kind of easy to forget things and if you get an alert you might remember um other than that i don't know did we ever decide on how we're gonna say bye now i think let's just go back to the old way all right okay bye (laughs) bye oh jesus uh we'll eat eat you alive that's some serious (laughs) shit man